construction is up, manufacturing is up, spending is up. After three consecutive quarters of growth, it seems Britain is showing slow but steady signs of economic recovery. Consumer confidence is growing and shoppers seem more willing to part with their money. The retail sector saw a 0.6% rise in sales last month. The investment in and the construction of new homes in the UK has led to a rise in housing prices. Here in London, they've gone up by 10% in the last month alone. Now that's great if you're selling, not so great if you're trying to get on the property ladder. Chancellor George Osborne praised the news, but admitted there is still a long way to go. Britain is poorer because of the crash that happened five years ago. This government is turning that around, and thanks to the hard work of the British people, there is now an economic recovery. People are feeling it as they get jobs, and those jobs get better for people. But of course, we've got to stick with this plan, because the alternative to go back to high unemployment, to businesses going bust, to borrowing going up and taxes with it, that's the alternative, and we've got to avoid that. But there's a gap between economic growth and the rising cost of living. At 2.5%, the UK has the highest inflation rate in the European Union. Food bills are up by more than 12% since 2007, and the average household is paying $667 more for energy compared to six years ago. The anti-poverty group Energy Bill Revolution says among European countries, the UK is second only to Estonia for the number of people struggling to pay their fuel bills. When the gas prices are going up and the fuel prices are going up and the companies are making so, many, so much profits that are not getting back to the people, I think it's a problem. The government is addressing fuel prices by advising people on how they should heat their homes this winter. Britain's economy may be turning a corner, but many don't see the GDP numbers translating into a better quality of life. Catherine Stansel, Al Jazeera, London.